Welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm going to be showing you a little bit of my Fuji X-T30 F-Log testing. I wanted to make the best use of this time being quarantined and isolating during COVID-19 madness and I hope this video is inspiring for you to get out there and try something during this time um, or stay in your house and try something during this time. So yeah, this was me testing the F-Log on the Fuji X-T30, but F-Log in general, once again, because a friend and mentor of mine, Evan Schneider, recently put out a video that you should definitely go watch and subscribe to his channel. It's amazing, and the X-T3 was what he was using to shoot this, and it's in F-Log originally, and I just love his grading and I love his footage so much and so it inspired me to try F-Log once again on the Fuji cameras that I have. So that's what this video that you're about to watch is and that's what this test was about. So yeah, before I get to that I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I did for this test and then afterwards I'll tell you what I learned from it. So for this test really all that I did was took my X-T30 with the kit lens to a local park and made sure to keep my distance from everyone while shooting in different light and color situations and in different artifact situations like grass waving against grass or pine needles on a tree. Really any lighting or um, artifact or color situations that I thought would be a good opportunity to really push F-Log just a little bit, but in very real scenarios. So that's what I did. I shot mostly in 120 frames per second in 1080p, and I shot a few clips in 4K24, which is why you might see a couple of repeating clips in the video I'm gonna show you. So yeah, that's what I was doing for the test. And then color grading, I just brought it back and I used the conversion LUT from Fuji to convert it to Eterna, from F-Log to Eterna. And then I took that Eterna footage and I just put my Fuji LUT on there. So yeah, if you haven't checked out my LUTs yet, quick plug, go to the link down below and buy my LUTs. Um, I really appreciate the support. But otherwise, this is my LUT on top of the Eterna conversion LUT. So yeah, that's what you're about to see right now. I'll let you watch this video and then I'll come back with what I learned and a few thoughts. I fall down when you're mine I get up when you're a stranger Out of sight, out of mind no warning to surrender Nothing but a fool 
All right, I hope you liked that video. I'm gonna tell you now a little bit about what I learned from my experience. I'm still impressed by how well F-Log holds up in smaller bit rates and smaller codecs. So this was shot in 8-bit uh, in 1080p for the most part and 100 megabits per second. And really there's no significant banding and there's no significant color or artifacting issues or anything like that. Uh, I'll get to some other stuff in a second, but yeah, I'm just impressed by how well F-Log holds up compared to, to other log profiles from other manufacturers, uh, even using smaller codecs, bit rates, etc. cetera. Uh, F-Log doesn't fall apart all that quickly. It does tend to get a little bit noisy and it's not the look that I really prefer in most scenarios. It can at times fall apart entirely in the shadows and I've tested F-Log on the X-T3, the X-T30 using both 8-bit and 10-bit and I've also tested using ProRes files from the Ninja 5 and I do just find that it doesn't hold up incredibly well in the shadows. Um, I think that's pretty standard for log profiles on these smaller mirrorless systems. But in general, yeah, that may be my personal experience. I may not be using it perfectly. So yeah, take into account user error here, but I just don't love the way that it generates noise and I don't love the way that it looks in the shadows and can tend to fall apart there. And I also don't exactly experience the increase in the dynamic range like it's talked about for the most part when it comes to log profiles. I know that it's probably there, but I just don't personally experience it significantly enough to justify using F-Log and going through the workflow. So yeah, for me, I don't experience that benefit of dynamic range. And I also feel like it gets a little bit too noisy. So yeah, unless there's a situation that really calls for it, I'm probably not going to be using F-Log still continuing forward. I do love seeing what other people can create with it, specifically professionals like Evan Schneider. Um, but until I'm able to do professional grade coloring or professional color grading, uh, either way, yeah, I probably won't keep using F-Log. It's fun to test it. It definitely will at some point, I'm sure, be useful for projects. But for the time being, I'm just gonna stick to my customized classic Chrome. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. So this was a fun little test and I hope this video was helpful for you. If you'd like to see more content like this, please leave me ideas below. Uh, I'd love to make more videos during this time of isolation and quarantine, uh, give you something to do as well. So maybe get out there and test F-Log or the log profile on your camera for yourself. And yeah, I'll talk to you in the next video. See ya.